Hello, hello, and welcome once again. J76NY here, and welcome to the first episode of a brand new series. This is Strategic Command World War One. I've had this game, as well as the uh, Strategic Command World at War, the World War II version, for quite some time. I just haven't done anything with them. Uh, but a game called The Great War Western Front is set to come out hopefully sometime this year, and it looks like a whole lot of fun, so I decided to uh, bring some... Uh, World War One content to the channel. Uh, if you are a fan of the Strategic Command series, I'm going to be doing something on uh, World at War at some point, too. Um, they do have the American Civil War in the series, as well as the uh, Franco-Prussian War, which is uh, very interesting. Uh, being the first episode of the series, if you could hit the like button and uh, leave a comment, Kind of curious what you guys think about games like this. Um, it's a uh, hex based counter turn based game, uh, kind of like a board game. Um, I played a bunch of World at War before I started doing this YouTube thing, and it's a pretty fun game to play. Uh, we're going to be starting a single player campaign uh, as the Central Powers. Uh, this is one of three World War One base games that I have, and I'm probably going to be doing something with all of them in the lead-up to uh, The Great War being released. Uh, we're going to start the 1914 Call to Arms campaign. Uh, the victory conditions for this campaign. Uh, if any two of France, Russia, and the UK have surrendered, or their national morale is below... Uh, 1%, it gives us a major victory. Uh, if on the 11th of November 1918, neither side has won a major victory and the Central Powers hold Berlin, Vienna, Constantinople, Paris, and Verdun, uh, that'll give us a minor victory. So let's uh, start the uh, campaign. All right, we're going to be going with the Central Powers. Uh, let's see... We're going to go with the intermediate. Um, not going to go with any of the uh, bonuses for the AI at this point. I'm going to go with just probably the basic setup here. We're going to have fog, fog of War. The weather is going to come into effect. Uh, we are going to be able to undo our moves. Uh, retreat rules. I've uh, glanced over the manual, um, so I'm not completely going into this blind. Uh, but that looks like it's about what I want. Um, we could go with... Uh, I guess it's not going to let me do the uh, NATO counters there. Uh, but we'll just leave these as is. I guess we can uh, turn that on there. There's the NATO counters. I'm going to go with the uh, regular, the recommended there. Alright. Britain declares war on Germany. Every man expected to do his duty for king and country. Oh, by the way, Happy New Year, everybody. If you're watching this uh, on the day it premiered, it is the first day of 2023. I sincerely hope everyone was smart and is safe and starting the new year in good health. Okay, our deployment phase starts now. Now, the way I'm going to do this is uh, this first episode is going to be uh, my turn then the AI, and then I'm going to do another uh, turn of mine. Uh, after that, I'm going to be starting each episode with the AI uh, taking their turn, uh, primarily for my own benefit, um, so I don't forget what the AI did in the uh, intervening time in between recording episodes. Uh, most of our army is now mobilized, but some units remain to be deployed. Some options on deploying these are to deploy them to strike hard in the west, uh, strengthen your forces in the east, and deploy them in the south to take part in the conquest of Serbia. 
choose wisely because this is probably the most important decision you will have to make in the coming conflict. Uh, if you select auto deploy, then these units will be placed within the vicinity of their historical starting points, mainly near Belgium, though some cavalry would deploy further south near the French frontier. Okay, so we do have units that we can deploy. We've got a headquarters unit, artillery. Uh, we do have a cavalry corps plus two infantry corps. Um, in terms of Belgium, historically the Germans tried coming through Belgium uh, right at the onset of hostilities, uh, Schlieffen plan, I believe it was called. Um, I'm going to hold off on doing that for the time being. Uh, I do actually plan on going into Belgium. I'm just not going to do it right at the start. Uh, so let's get von Bulow's headquarters unit. Um, now we can deploy out here. Got a headquarters unit here. Uh, we've got units up in the west. And it doesn't look like they have any headquarters units. Uh, we're going to deploy Von Bulow out in the west. Uh, artillery. I know artillery does play a pretty major role in uh, softening up the defenses of the entrenched units, taking away their uh, entrenchment bonuses. Uh, and it doesn't look like we have any artillery out here right now on the western front, so I'm going to deploy that unit there. Uh, cavalry Corps, uh, they're good for scouting. So let's deploy them here, and then this Cavalry Corps we're going to send down Now uh, we've got cavalry down here, so that's that's a good thing. Actually, that's them. That's the enemy. Uh, we'll put them in Essen. Uh, infantry. Put you here. Uh, unfortunately, we can't deploy into Austria at this present time. Um, it'd be kind of nice to be able to do that, so, but we can't. So I'm going to put these guys in uh, Nuremberg. All right. Successful advance into Serbia seizing Belgrade and Niche will encourage Bulgaria to enter the war on our side. But we must also hold our eastern frontier, for Russian advances may entice Romania into entering the war against us. Romania is also an important food source, so war with that country could lead to hunger and low morale at home. We must therefore advance into Serbia, while also holding our eastern frontier as securely as possible. Uh, violating the neutrality of Belgium, the Netherlands, or Denmark will automatically bring the British into the war, sending any naval units, including submarines, anywhere near the British coast into the North Sea or Atlantic would also provoke them. Uh, so take care if you hope to delay Britain's war entry. Uh, Imperial Germany's war economy relies on goods imported from neutral Netherlands. It is therefore vital to keep the Dutch friendly to us using diplomacy if necessary, as it is solely due to be her friendly ne neutral status that she can import goods that would otherwise de be deprived of us. If the Netherlands were to enter the war on either side or swing towards favoring the Entente, then we would lose these vital imports and our people could face food sort shortages. Okay, so our first turn here. Now, this number here, zero, uh, that is the points that we have to spend. It's called uh, MPP points. Um, 
units that are on the front line already are um, better equipped to attack. They get an attack bonus if they don't move uh, right off the bat. So we're going to go... Let's see. I, I want my forces to be in a position to attack uh, Belgium when I decide that's what I want to do. Uh, but for right now... <coughs> Okay, we're going to move in here. Uh, let's have you... Scout. Out. <coughs> well, that didn't do much. Okay, let's move into Luxembourg here. So moving our forces forward here. I think our artillery is out of range. Now we are in a position to be able to attack uh, with some of these units. Let's move you. Okay. I'm not going to attack Verdun because they're heavily entrenched. They've got... Uh, 98% readiness, uh, 6 entrenchment. Wow. Readable units. Oh, we can't upgrade uh, any of our units just yet. points to uh, operate these guys. Operate means move them on a rail line to uh, different sections of the front, uh, but we can uh, we can start moving them a little closer to actually I'm going to hold them where they are for now. Alright, so our navy and we do have a navy Right now, this is the uh, German Navy. Okay, let's... There are some Marines. I'm gonna move them up into the Baltic. Get our destroyers moved up as well. have this armored cruiser come up and join the <coughs> with this group up here. Start scouting out with our uh, with our naval units. Okay. 
uh, pre-dreadnought Germany. We're gonna bring you guys out like this. I do want to uh, move my subs a little bit forward, just not much. I'm going to keep these guys in port here uh, for the time being. Now let's see if there's any attacks that would be beneficial to us to make. It's a 3 to 1 there, 3 to 1, uh, 3 to 2, 3 to 2. Two to two, two, two to two. All right, so I think we're gonna start by attacking the Eighth Corps of France. Um, they've got one entrenchment. The morale is uh, fairly good. Okay. All right, now we can't move these guys out, so unless, uh, unless we could switch them. Nope. Two to three now. All right, so we can move these guys because they didn't move just yet. And we just can't move them there. Undo that. Uh, oh. I guess that's not something I could do. I'll have to look that up. Let's see if I think we can sh switch these out. Yep. And hit him with a two to two. And a two to three. All right, that French unit is done. Okay, we got a three to two here. And a three to one. Unfortunately, he's the only one that can attack right now. Uh, I don't really want to take three damage. I don't want to take more damage than what I'm able to dish out. But we could soften them up a little bit. Okay. that good. All right. <coughs> okay, so we got the Austro-Hungarian Navy. Uh, we're in port right now in the Adriatic. Uh, we do have a sub available. Got enemy contact. Got an O to one with this. That's a French dreadnought. 
we have to deal with this. Five to three, wow. That would get him wiped out. We're gonna move him back. That wasn't too bad. Here. You up to the our destroyer down. Five to six. Wow. That might actually be worth doing. And it didn't do six damage to us. That's fantastic. Uh, do we have anything out here? Whoops. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to move my sub onto the uh, convoy route here. Which is the Egyptian UK supplier out. But that's not going to happen at this point. Uh, you. I'm going to move you into. Here. Uh, move you into port here. Actually. Move you into port. Ran into some enemy troops here. Okay, that's a two to nothing. Got two to one against him here. Two to nothing. Here, like this. I hit the uh, the garrison here. Two to two. That's. We move him over here. I think he's just outside of range. Uh, we'll leave you in position for now. Um, we've got a garrison unit in Budapest. We'll leave him where he is. This plane. Start bringing him down. Okay, let's. I had some cavalry down here. I should have brought my cavalry out a little closer. That's a two to three. Three. Two and one. Now we're gonna leave these two garrison units here for now. Uh, 
Uh, we're gonna move you up to the front. Uh, Raija is a national morale objective, so might want to do something with that. Uh, can we move right into the Gulf? Let me know if the uh, sound on this is too much. Uh, cavalry can scout. Scout out ahead. Okay. Oh shit, I didn't like that. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, we got two to two and two to two, so we could hit this Russian unit here. Uh, let's move you forward a little bit. And our garrison can attack. Okay, he pulled out. Okay, so the Austrians... Vanguard is a national morale objective and a secondary supply point. Okay. charging in there. Alright, so we did a little bit of damage there. She moved up. Is there anything else I want to do? Uh, move you back on the National Royal Objective here. Okay. So that's the Germans. The Austrians. Now we do have Ottoman forces here. Um... They haven't actually joined the war yet, so we're going to hold them in position uh, for the time being. We can purchase units uh, when we have 
money to do so. Um, production, this is what's coming and when. Uh, so we've got this uh, battleship, submarine, and a uh, looks like a railgun or a heavy artillery piece. That's for the Germans. For the Austrians, uh, artillery coming in fe January, February. Okay. Like I said, we don't have any money to do anything with it just yet. Uh, diplomacy. Uh, once again, we don't have any money. Uh, what I've been thinking about in terms of diplomacy is... Um, they're 20%, Belgians are 20% for the Entente. Um, let's see, Spain is neutral. I've been thinking about trying to sway Spain. Uh, see if we can't get them to join our side. Um, let's see, the U.S. is neutral. So I may do diplomacy in terms of Belgium and Spain. If we can get Belgium to join our side without attacking them, that would be great. Uh, research uh, for Germany. I'm probably going to work on infantry weapons and tank development. Um, also probably uh, trench warfare. Infantry weapons... Uh, in infantry warfare for the uh, Austria-Hungarians and the Ottomans. Um, I might do mobility. They've, they've got a lot of ground that they're going to have to cover um, into the Middle East and stuff like that. So that's what we may do. Um, in terms of the reports go, uh, this is land units that we know about. Russia has the most. Uh, actually, we do, but that is just at this present time. Um, losses are uh, France lost one. It's the detailed losses. Uh, one French corps was destroyed. And uh, I think uh, that is probably going to do it for the first turn. Um, I want these guys to be more than half strength when we uh, send them out into the ocean. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that we can do. Now, these are convoy routes. We can disrupt trade to the UK along these convoy routes. Uh, they can also do the same to us by putting horses on our convoy routes. Uh, we're going to leave these three naval units here for now. Um, actually, got a cruiser, an armored cruiser, and a dreadnought. Uh, we're going to leave them there for now. Uh, if the Russians come along, then we can uh, do something like that. And have them available to help out over there. So that's my first set of moves. Um, things are getting kicked off. So let's end the turn. August 1st, 1914. See what the Entente does. Uh, Luxembourg surrenders. Germany plunders 23 MPP. Uh, Commander of the High Seas Fleet, Admiral von Igno, whatever. Our Mittelmere Division, whose flagship is the Gobin Battlecruiser, is currently in the Mediterranean, sailing towards Constantinople. It is recommended that the Gobin continue on to Constantinople will be taken into service with the Ottoman Navy and renamed that. If you decide not to send the Gobin on to Constantinople, then she will instead sail to Pola in the Adriatic where she will serve alongside the Austro-Hungarians. 
uh, would you like Gobin to sail to Constantinople to serve with the Ottoman Navy, or would you rather she sail to Pola? Uh, saying yes to this will not only provide the Ottoman Navy with an urgently needed reinforcement, but it will also help to mobilize opinion in the Ottomans towards joining the war on our side. So we're going to say yes. Uh, Chancellor Conrad von Holzendorf, General von Bohm, Ermoyle, and the 4th and 7th Corps of our 2nd Army are currently en route to Novi Sad and Emmensburg near the Serbian border, where they will deploy shortly to take part in the invasion of Serbia, which we already started. However, deploying them there may leave us with insufficient forces facing the Russians. Therefore, it has been suggested uh, that we send them to the Russian border instead. Unfortunately, sending them to fight against the Russians will delay their arrival by several weeks. Would you like these units to immediately deploy to fight the Serbians or send them against the Russians? I think I'm going to send them to uh, help out with the Serbian front. If we can get the Serbians out of the war early, uh, then we can focus our attention on the Russians. Um, the Western Front's probably going to be a little bit slower moving, um, kind of inch by inch moving along, holding our ground. Um, but I do want to take the Serbians out and then move on to the Russians. Um, and at some point, we'll see how the diplomacy goes with Belgium. And then uh, decide when I want to enact uh, Schlieffen. Uh, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia before their army was finished mobilizing and Russian support. Their Serbian allies led to a mobilization plan being changed. Uh, sending these units of their second army to serve against Russia left Austro-Hungary's offensive against Serbia lacking in sufficient strength. So we are going to uh, let's see. Would you like these units to immediately deploy against the Serbians? Yes. Austria-Hungary deploys second army to fight against the Serbians. There they are. UK protests against German naval movements. French mobilization continues. Uh, Russian mobilization continues. Austro-Hungarian mobilization continues. Uh, okay, so now we do have uh, MPP to spend. Uh, Germany collects 308. Uh, 356 actually with all this. Austria-Hungary collects 239 and the Ottomans collect 16. Okay. So that was the uh, kind of the informational part of the turn. Uh, now we see the type of movements they make. did get around us into that national morale objective. And I am going to have to turn the volume down. It looks like they're moving out to uh, cause some problems with the Navy, the French Navy. Actually, I think that's the Russians. and France. French are moving headquarters units around reinforcing their lines. Serbians are forming a defensive line around Belgrade. Um, Didn't cause any damage to our submarine. But I swear there that we just got shredded. And All right, more damage to them than to us. Yeah, 
heavy, heavy attack here. Garrison unit. Heavy damage making in. So they are pushing into our territory. That's going to give them a... Uh, Kind of a boost. I'm going to turn that down at the end of uh, this recording here. So it looks like the uh, French front, the Western front is... Uh, fairly static. Uh, most of the action happened with the Russians. Uh, they did push into our territory, so we're going to have to do something about that. Um, it's going to be kind of easy to cut them off and deal with them uh, either in this upcoming turn or uh, the following one. Now they are entrenching along the western front. Uh, entrenching down in Serbia. The arrival of thousands of refugees from Galicia spreads fear through the Aus throughout Austro-Hungary. Uh, Austro-Hungary morale drops due to the fall of Lemberg. UK seizes the Ottoman dreadnought Sultan Osman. Ottomans are outraged. UK protests against German naval movements. Fall of Lemberg encourages Romania to swing towards the Entente. France increases its arms production. Okay, so Lemberg is going to be our objective to retake. All right, first cavalry corps is destroyed. Uh, so we lost Lemberg. Uh, Tarnopol, Cernowitz, Tilts, uh, rival of thousands of refugees. So Austro-Hungary, their morale dropped. Uh, without assistance, our Austro-Hungarian allies could struggle to achieve decisive victories against Serbia. Uh, to do this, click on war maps, uh, send aid to Austro-Hungary, then convoy maps, then click on the German flag and you can adjust the number of military production points being sent to Austro-Hungary. Okay, so given our weakness in East Prussia, we could greatly strengthen our position there by bringing Paul von Hindenburg out of retirement and giving him a field command there. To assist him in his duties, Eric Ludendorff can serve as his chief of staff. Providing Hindenburg and Ludendorff with the necessary logistical support will cost us 200 MPP at 50 MPP for four turns. Would you like to employ von Hindenburg to a field command in Eastern Prussia. We're gonna say yes to that, even though it's gonna cost us quite a bit. Uh, Hindenburg comes out of retirement, and there he is. Huge numbers of refugees have fled from the area of fighting, and the need to feed, clothe, and house them is placing a huge burden on our empire's economy and infrastructure. If we are to prevent any further impact on our national morale, it'd be wise to invest in caring for the refugees uh, saying yes will provide food and clothing, cost 50 MPPs, and it will raise our national morale by 2,000 points. Uh, or we could take a 2,000 point hit on our national morale, which we are not going to do, so I'm going to say yes. Hey. Okay. Oh, that made our people happy. Uh, war maps. Okay. That's not what I wanted to do. All right, so they are pushing into our territory, which is not good at all. Let's see if we can uh, ground cover, readiness and morale. Okay, one to two. Nothing. 
That sucks. One. Wipe them out. That's now it's two to nothing still. Right there, we retook that position there. Uh, let's move Hindenburg. All right. Well, they look gonna have to do something about Lemberg here. Cut off now. Um, we could come in behind this guy because his entrenchment isn't that good there, but it's going to leave them open to. Pretty nasty attacks. Let's take care of this situation first. Units out. One to nothing, huh? I really don't want to bring this guy down to deal with this. May not have a choice, though. This guy should probably. Uh, six points max. He's reinforced. Okay. Fortunately, we can't reinforce him now. One to one. I did nothing. Wow. So we retook. We can move back into it. Uh, unfortunately, that's going to hamper our attack up here. If anything, it'll weaken these guys a little bit. Oh. 
I'm going to hold off on doing any attacks. We're going to entrench uh, where we can here. Okay. Two to one there. Reinforce you. Uh, reinforce you. All right, so I think that's about what we're going to be doing on the western front. I do want to actually operate some of my units. All right, spend 18 MPP to operate this unit. That'll let me move him. Oh. Where do I want to move him? This unit. Bring him here. Two to one here. We could probably get rid of this guy here. I can't put him right in the port. And reinforce him, though. That type of casualties. Capital here. Let's switch these units out. Only gives me a one to one, though. Okay. 
Okay. See if there's anything else we could do. So he'll be completely cut off and surrounded. Okay, up here, I don't think we've really done much. Oh, actually we did. Great. Naval units here. We've got two French ships we have to deal with. Uh, one to two, one to one, one to one. Let's move you up over here. Got a Russian battle cruiser. Uh, pull you out. Damage evaded. That's good. One to one. Okay, so we did make him fall back. sure what that was, but there we go. Leaves this destroyer here. Let's make sure he can't get through. Uh let's reinforce our armored cruiser. Uh, we're going to reinforce these marines. Um, I'm kind of curious where the British fleet might be located, but I'm not really... I don't really want to send them out too close, just in case. Um, we are going to have to deal with a blockade at some point. All right. On to the Western Front. All right. These guys are going to hold position still because we're not ready. I don't want to go into Belgium just yet. Uh, let's get our artillery. Still way outside of position here. Let's bring you up. Unfortunately, we can't really do anything. Okay, that's a two to one there. Uh, if we could take Belfort, that would be nice. Uh, Nancy also is a two to two, so that's that's not bad. One to three. Actually, swap out. Two units here. Oh, that actually made it worse.
I'll have to look up and see how you undo things. Well, let's swap them out again. And now we can't do anything. Oh, whoops. Alright. unit here. Swap out here. Okay. Can't move into the, that zone right yet. Okay, so we're launching kind of piecemeal attacks all across the front here. This cost us quite a bit. Three to one. Let's see. Got a hundred and hundred percent morale. They don't have any entrenchment left. Go to diplomacy, uh, Belgium, fifty MPPs to try and sway Belgium to our side, and uh, fifty for the French. I mean the Spanish. The Ottomans. They've only got sixteen. Wait, this is. Chits. Uh, I don't know if the Belgium's even worth it. Let's try and get Spain to do something. Okay, and then research uh, for Germany. 75, that's not going to leave us with a lot here. Uh, go with infantry weapons first. Insufficient funds, so we won't go with infantry weapons first. <coughs> 100 MPP on infantry warfare. Uh, I'm going to go 75 here. And then the... I only have 70. Just want to take a quick look over here. I think we've done everything we can. All 
right, so we are right on a supply line. Move our sub down here. We're going to move our dreadnought out here. That was bad. We're going to move him back a little bit. Then we're going to move our other dreadnought down. I don't think we can attack. We'll bring. Okay. Just wanted to do some blockading. Uh, but we've got a, a UK light cruiser, the indomitable battle cruiser. All right. I haven't done anything with the Ottomans just yet, so um, we're going to leave them as they are. Like I said before, they haven't really entered the war, so we can't really do much with them. But we do need to be ready to uh, deal with whatever happens to come up. But that's going to do it for this, our first episode. Um, not bad progress. We've managed to uh, stop them from advancing uh, any further into our territory uh, than what they had. Uh, we're going to have to deal with this unit here uh, soon. Get him out of there and then we can form up on the front. Uh, Western Front's not going too bad. Uh, we've taken some territory. I'm not really going to make a huge push just yet. Um, I think probably next turn we're going to spend uh, reinforcing and, and entrenching uh, other than attacking unless there's something that presents itself. Uh, anyway, if you like the episode, hit the like button. Uh, it'll help the uh, series out a little bit. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section below about the game. If you have any tips or advice, put those there. Uh, if you are new to the channel, a fan of the Strategic Command series, hit the subscribe and you'll come along as we play as the uh, Central Powers through World War I. Uh, and we will see you for the continuation of our Central Powers campaign going into the end of August 1914. J76NY saying thank you very much for watching and have yourself a very good day.